Thank you for being here. I am Isaac Marsland from University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And this is a paper with a fellow at Unoweda, a Malokele. We're looking at whether export promotion agencies can stem the, the industrialization process in Sub-Saharan Africa. And what motivates us is that we have some papers like uh, this one that says that uh, limited export uh, opportunities uh, causes manufacturing plants to uh, scale down the production and employment. And uh, Stein also says that if you need to raise living standards in Africa especially, you need some form of industrialization. And, but we will agree that Investment in the industry sector needs a lot of cash or, or a, a lot of financing. That means we need a, to find some way a, or some form of financial development to see whether we can finance a, the development of industry. And there is one thing that has the potential to do that in countries with weak financial markets, it looks like uh, it is EPA, which is Export a Promotion Agency. And that kind of agency, which is EPA, it implements a wide range of policies uh, to sustain both manufacturing and export everywhere around the world. And uh, Britain, for instance, uh, has implemented a such agency it's about 100 years ago. But Still now, there are plenty of countries uh, that have not implemented such policy that can help them uh, to boost manufacturing and at the same time boost uh, the export. And <clears throat> what did we do? In Africa, actually, there are 28 countries, or NSSA. There are 28 countries where they have implemented uh, an EPA. And there are 20 countries where they have not implemented a EPA. And EPA, it deals with lack of capital. That means they allow firm or firms to get access to external market. There is market tensions, especially when lenders, uh, when, when lenders give out shorter maturity loan, a smaller loan amount with widened spread. When you have a EPA, that EPA serves at, as an intermediary between the traditional capital market and the firms so that they help the firms to get access to the private uh, credit market. And they also give insurance to exporters. Imagine that you have a, a something you send to another country and you don't know the buyer. And that buyer can, can default, may not pay you. Then if you have insurance, that insurance will help you to get paid back. Then that means you deal with country risk, with credit risk, and a lot of counterparty risk. Uh, just having the insurance. And because you have insurance also, uh, the banker would now relax some borrowing uh, standards. They become more lenient because you have insurance and you have someone somewhere that would buy and pay back. And also, let's say you send something to a foreign country and you, you are in a competitive market. You cannot uh, force your buyer to pay you in advance. What if the buyer uh, says that, I don't want it? It's at the dock. Then <laughs> you have a trouble. Then if you have an EPA in your country, that EPA will help you deal uh, through the insurance provided to you. They help you deal with a lot of uh, uncertainties. And also, if there is a a problem between buyer and a, 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 between the buyer and the seller, then 
we, we you don't know the legal system of your importer. But once you have the EPA, they have a wide range of services, legal, marketing, finance, a wide a range of services that they provide that sustain both manufacturing and export. And also they allow firm a, to a, export directly and indirectly. They give a, a, some brochures, some market, a, a, they get around some a, a, a information asymmetries because if we are in the, if we are private competitors, why would I tell you about business opportunities in another country if I want to sell a product that you want to, to sell to? And once we have an EPA that will make the information available to everyone or every potential and actual exporter or manufacturer that uh, we get around a most problem of lack of information and market failures. And also, they allow firms to have access to, uh, to finance their operation, like working capital and trade, and credit, uh, trade finance and uh, uh, credit, uh, trade credit. And what is the, the punchline of our study is that we see that three years after you have an EPA, the industry value added was by about 3.24%. And seven years, it was by 14.64%, which I believe is very substantial. And the trade to GDP ratio was by 70% within three years after having an EPA. And when you have an EPA that works with a, an export, a, a country that has an export processing zone and the country has an EPA that reduces a, a customs and trade a regulatory for a, a exporters and manufacturers. And EPA also reduces a, the amount of collateral that you need to access a financial market. So in some countries, firms need a, as high as 80, 90 percent of the value of the loan in terms of collateral. That's a, that's a really an inhibitor to a credit market, and they also arrange a facilitated credit for a, for firms, a, especially for manufacturing firms. And what do we want to answer is whether EPA as a policy, whether it has a real impact or whether the policy has been successful in uh, Africa. And we also look whether that agency allows firms to have access to the private uh, credit market. And we have, as we said, we have 28 countries in Africa with EPA. And Gabon, for, a, a, for instance, has a, a, the Promo Gabon, the, the EPA, since 1964. And the latest one a, might be a, the TISA in a, South Africa a, as of November 2009. A, that means we have a lot of a, variation in terms of date when EPAs a, have been implemented. And some, a, there are some early trade reformers like Ghana, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria. These countries have implemented their EPAs since the 1970s. But we have 20 laggards in the region. And what do we do? We, we collect some data on EPA or TPOs. That's how they call them in the, at the, in the database of the International Trade Center. Uh, we, uh, there they give you information about who is heading the agency. Uh, you can have the, e the email, the phone number, etc. And we, we contact them. Some do reply, some don't. Uh, but we have some uh, specific information uh, when needed. And also there is a, 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 a paper by Letterman. Uh, that paper gives a lot of information also about uh, that structure. And we, we take our main manufacturing variable from uh, variables from the WDI from the 1960 to 2000. 
uh, 11. And we take some other variables from the enterprise service uh, database. And there is one thing. Spence uh, has a growth report that been written in, uh, for the World Bank in 2008. They, they talk a little bit about this kind of agency, EPA. And uh, their take is that these uh, agencies, their impact cannot be really evaluated because of lack of counterfactual. And so we pick up on this, we apply a difference and differences technique. What do we assume is that a manufacturing output or manufacturing outcomes would have been the same, would, would ch travel the same path through time between EPA and non-EPA country. And what makes the whole difference is the EPA event that has occurred in one country and hasn't occurred in another one. And because of the assumption of parallel trend, now we can apply a difference and differences methodology to uh, generate the counterfactual so that we can tell what it would have been in those countries where uh, there is an EPA, hadn't these countries implemented that agency. And what we do, we do a matching. But the matching is not necessary, but it gives us more a, a confidence. A, we look at initial a, a, an industry value added, a trade to, to GDP and manufacturing value added between a country where an EPA has been implemented and a, we compare it with the average, with that of another country where EPA has, has not been implemented. And if it is not significant a, at the outset, we match these two countries. And we do that. And there are some, a, a, you, you may agree with me that as we go far back in time, a 1960s, then the data is not that good. That means a, that allows us to drop eight countries and to have a perfect match with 20 countries where we have EPA and 20 countries where, where we don't. And <clears throat> then after we do a, 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 the matching based on our t-test, we now able to do our a, evaluation from three years, five years, seven and 10 years before and after that a agency has been implemented. Okay. <laughs> and, but we have that gentleman who said that uh, it's not really important to have a perfect match or a, that the two a sets a, of a control and a treatment group, a, a, the two groups don't, a, don't need to have the, a similar a characteristics or in terms of outcomes a, from a, the pre-intervention and the post-intervention, from the pre-intervention, sorry. And we collect some data also from the enterprise survey, a service, as I said. And after we did our, our on this data, we do not do the, a, the difference and difference, a, or difference and differences. What we did was some, a, a fixed effect a regressions only. But after we a, a performed our a difference and differences, we do a placebo test to see whether the, the results stand. What, what did we do there? We, we take some countries, now the randomness is more guaranteed. We take some countries around the world where they have not implemented EPA at all. And we compare the outcomes with those of the countries in SSA where EPA has never been implemented. And there is no significant difference in our a placebo. But there, there are a lot of significant differences with, a, between our treatment and a control group. That gives us a better confidence. And, a, and that this is basically one way to test the assumption of parallel trends and outcomes between a treatment and, and, and control groups. And 
we don't, we don't go to the, uh, over the literature, no time. And you can see, we, we gave this in our punchline uh, already, but we have more results uh, than this, uh, that it, uh, we do it over three years, five, seven, and 10 years. And also, even when it's not significant, but we have a, a design, the, the, the signs of the estimates are correct. And I, I, I may add also, in addition to our a placebo test, we do an average a, a treatment effect test, like be, before and after, and the result still stand. And we do them also in some a financial outcomes like uh, you can see a trade uh, from the private sector and uh, is significantly, that means if those countries uh, didn't have EPA, trade would have been 10, uh, 11% lower. Uh, not trade, I, would, uh, I mean to say uh, credit. Private credit would have been 11% uh, lower. And <coughs> uh, we talked about this in the punch. Here are the, uh, the policy lessons. And we said that those countries that have not implemented EPA probably need to do that. And because, and if they do it, they, they need to subsidize a, a credit a from, like, you don't give, a, EPA usually, an EPA usually can, do some credit, uh, 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 can give some uh, uh, sub uh, subsidies to, to firms or also uh, uh, subsidize the borrowing cost and provide a matching grant or you do some equity infusion. But in countries with weak uh, institutions where uh, corruption might be high, equity, equity infusion might be uh, much better for the greater good than providing a, a matching grant. And also, we, we, we would uh, recommend that there are some uh, financial incentives in terms of tax breaks, uh, uh, like work on some uh, reducing some barriers, and offer insurance, and do some uh, inter uh, intermediation between uh, the traditional financial uh, uh, sector and, and the and the manufacturing firms, and also don't do an EPA just because you want to have another state agency. You have to do it to mainstream it, like resource it, have a competent staff, and finance it. In conclusion, we said that EPA or EPAs have strong effects on manufacturing as early as two years following the implementation. And EPA may assume a certain task that are left out by a traditional financial intermediation. And SSA countries without a EPA probably have missed out an opportunity to, a, to have better outcomes in terms of manufacturing and export. And our counterfactuals suggest that decline in industrialization in the region marked by a, some staggering economic losses could have been worse if the, a, a, we did a, certain countries didn't have a, that kind of a institution. And this is where we stop. And if you have any question, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat>